Hi, Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. So I quite often get asked why I'm stitching on two pieces of fabric at the same time. So in this video, I'm going to talk about backing fabrics. So I like to use a backing fabric on most of my embroideries and there are a few exceptions and I'll talk about those later but I just want to say that you don't have to use a backing fabric this is my preference many people do beautiful embroideries without one so I suggest that you try them yourself one with and one without and see which one you prefer. So the main reason I put a backing fabric behind my embroidery is because it makes the fabric, the embroidery fabric, much more stable. Um, so I've got a couple of examples here. So this is my little sunflower stitches, five stitches for sunflowers um, video. Um, and I just did this on one piece of fabric. This is a calico cotton, which we'll talk about in a minute. And I just did it on one because it was a little sample, really, and I painted the background as well. But you can actually see um, through it and you can see my fingers I don't know if you can see that on the camera um, but obviously one layer of fabric um, is much more see-through than two layers um, so this here which is also one of our projects it's got a backing behind it and this I just move it around it's much stiffer now it's much more of a solid background to work on so I've just given myself an extra little bit of um, assistance if you like with having that extra piece behind it. If you were to go um, even heavier with your stitching, so this is a little sampler I did of some of the things that we had in the shop and this has got some really heavy items on it. It's got some shisha mirrors and some sequins, metal sequins um, and all sorts of stuff. This is quite heavy and you can sort of see the way I'm moving that, how that fabric handles. It's not really loose and floppy, it's just got this certain amount of um, strength to it. Now um, much more sturdy piece of fabric so really good if you want to do some stitching that's much more densely stitched. So the other advantage of having two pieces of fabric together is the top piece doesn't distort or buckle so much because it's relying on the one underneath as well and they both have to move together it doesn't tend to move so much so if I just show you so that's the one layer there and you can see how floppy that is the two layers is much stiffer so now that's not going to move so much. If I want to distort this now, I've got to move two layers of fabric and not one layer. So there's some other advantages as well, and we'll look on the back for those. So if you look on the back, um, because we've got a second layer, if you had any stitches that were passing across the back, say you'd stitch from here across to here, or across this shape here to get to this leaf, you would see the thread through one layer of fabric. Because we've got two, it hides a multitude of sins. Um, I don't recommend that you do that with your threads, but just in case that happens, you won't be able to see it. And likewise, any little thread ends, so these little bits here that are secure and tight, but they've just got a little end showing. Um, one layer they might show through on the front, two layers they won't. So that um, will help to cover up those little ends as well. So the other thing that it does on the back is you can hide your ends on the back. So this is a little piece of gold work, it's a little gold work peacock here. And you can see here, these are the ends of my gold work. Now what you do with the ends is you fold them back on themselves and then you stitch around them and through the fabric and through the stitching. Now if you've only got one layer, you've got to rely on the stitches on the back only. And if there aren't many stitches to sew through, it can be quite fragile. And I often sew my um, gold work ends through that um, extra backing layer as well as the stitches at the same time. It just makes it a little bit strong and stops your gold thread um, coming undone. So really, really useful um, to finish the ends of your threads off in that second layer of fabric. So the other thing that it does as well is when you've finished your embroidery and you want to frame it, um, however you want to frame it, um, that second layer will again stop it moving so much and it makes it easier to frame. So the fabric that I like to use as my backing fabric is a cotton um, and my particular favourite is a calico cotton. So this is a calico here, you can tell it by its colour. So it is made out of cotton but it doesn't go through the same processes that something like an Egyptian cotton would go through. So it's not bleached um, and it's a bit coarser than normal cotton as well. But for a backing fabric that's absolutely fine. You want it to make your embroidery fabric a bit stiffer. Um, and it's really inexpensive as well. So it's a great thing to put on the back of your embroidery. You don't want to put the finest expensive um, material on the back. So calico is really, really good for that. So let's just talk about colour as well, because obviously this isn't white. So if you were going to put a backing fabric on a white fabric and you really want that white fabric to stand out and be beautiful and white, um, I would suggest a white cotton on the backing. 
um, as the backing fabric um, but you can use your backing fabric to change the effect of the um, embroidery fabric if you want so if you didn't want your white to be so gleaming white you could put something like a calico behind it and it will just knock it back a bit so I've actually done that in this piece here so this is a white um, linen it's an off-white linen but it's actually got this calico behind it so it doesn't scream white at me it's not really really bright white and it just knocks that brightness back a bit and makes it a little bit more antique so you can choose your backing colour carefully because you will be able to see it through the embroidery fabric. So likewise think about dark fabrics as well so I've got two dark fabrics here so similar colour navy so this one was a little sample I made and I just put a cotton backing behind it a calico backing behind it um, and it has just actually make this a little bit paler it doesn't feel quite so dark and rich um, as it would without so if you're going to use a dark fabric think about a dark backing behind it so this is um, the fabric from our Love Cinema Reality course um, and this is a dark navy and it's got a dark navy backing on it so it makes this navy look beautiful and rich and dark so do think about um, what colour goes behind your fabric because that will make a difference. So how do you use a backing fabric? So I think for a small project, it's fine just to put your two pieces together. So there's my embroidery fabric I want to stitch on. This is my backing fabric. You can just cut them the same size. You can put the two pieces together and you can frame them up in your frame, whichever frame you want to use. Not just a ring frame, but you could use a stretch bar or a slate frame. And you can just put the two together like so and then stitch on it as one piece of fabric. So it's the cream colour on the back for the backing fabric, the mustard colour on the front and I'm just going to stitch through that and stitch my design on it with the two pieces together. Now if you were doing a larger piece you might want to think about actually sewing your backing fabric to your embroidery fabric. It just makes it a bit more stable and stops the two kinds of fabric moving against each other. So this is one that I've done here. So this is a piece of silk shading I did for my silk shading book and I've actually attached this silk fabric to this backing fabric here. So this is a cotton on the back and I've done this by hand. So I've just... Um, used a sewing cotton so just an ordinary sewing cotton like this doesn't matter what color it is you're not going to see it it'll be on the back so any color will do something that you can see is a good idea and then i've stitched from the outside and down into the silk come up outside on the down on the into the silk now you can see that that stitch actually crosses the join um, crosses where the fabrics meet so some of the stitches in the backing fabric and some of the stitches in the silk and that just means that they do have a little bit of movement if they need to they're different kinds of fabric they will stretch um, at slightly different ways so when you were then framing up you would stretch the two together so you will always apply the two pieces of fabric at the same tension so i.e loose um, and then when you frame them up and you stretch them you stretch them together and they've got the same tension together if you have one piece at tension and then you apply to the other one onto the top they won't stretch together and the top one will be baggy so they need to be the same tension so you can either do it by hand like that or you can do it by machine as well so obviously the machining doesn't go into the background fabric so just make sure that it is really nice and smooth when you do that and that the two sit um, at the same tension but again both loose tension don't have one tight and one loose and apply it so just do them separately and then frame up your fabric afterwards. One more thing that you can think about if you have a larger piece that you're stitching on or you're working very dense areas of stitching that's going to be very thick areas of actual stitching you could sew the two pieces together around the design so this is the design here it's printed on I've got my backing fabric on there already but these two pieces aren't attached to each other only at the edge so they still can move a little bit and like I say if you've got a bigger design it's more likely that they'll move so what you can do is you can just stitch around the edge of your design again just using a cotton um, now this time use a cotton that's not going to be seen um, if you don't happen to cover it so I either a white cotton or a blue cotton probably for this but just a normal sewing cotton and you could just work around the very edge of the circle and just a little stab stitch so straight up and straight back down on the line very very tiny stitches and don't have to be close together they can be 
a couple of centimeters an inch apart and just sew all the way around the outside and then if you wanted to go around a major shape you could do that as well and that will just add a little bit more stability to your fabrics um, and make sure that they don't move so that if you're working a dense area of stitching the fabric won't pucker um, and it will stay nice and solid. So once you've stitched on your fabrics, your two pieces of fabric together, you can just frame them as they are. Now we have got videos on methods on how to do this, so I'm not going to cover that here, but we do have videos on how to frame up in a hoop and in a uh, display frames and how to frame your uh, pieces professionally, how to mount them professionally. So I'll put links to both of those videos up here. Do check those out because that goes into it in quite a lot of detail and shows that how I deal with that backing fabric as well. So there's a couple of occasions that I wouldn't put a backing fabric behind and that is on the type of fabric. So anything that's a little bit thicker, so something like a denim, um, if you were stitching on some denim clothes, um, or a twill, a linen twill um, is quite thick. So this is a linen twill here. You might know this if you've done some crawl work, that's often used for crawl work. Um, but this is quite a stiff fabric. Um, it doesn't really need a backing as well it's already stiff it's a twill so it's woven on the diagonal which means the weave is closer which means it's stronger anyway so that's pretty tough fabric it doesn't really need a backing fabric and i've done some quite heavy stitching and some gold work on this and it's not distorted at all so i probably wouldn't use one in that instance and the other time i wouldn't use one is if i'm using an even weave fabric or um, a counted fabric like an ada um, if you're not sure what those fabrics are, we have a video all about um, fabrics for embroidery and what you can use and what's not a good idea to use. So do check that out up here. I'll put a little link there because um, that's got lots of useful information on it. But anything that's a counted technique that you might see through. So these are some napkins that I made for the V&A um, Maker's Guidebook. Um, and you can see through the holes in this. Um, so I wouldn't put a bag packing fabric around this. You obviously have to think carefully about how you do your stitching. So you stitch a little bit different, so no backing fabric on counted fabrics. So I hope you found that useful. That's just a little insight into why I use a backing fabric and what I think um, it does and why it helps me. Um, Please try it out and see how you feel um, about it. And you can let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well if you're not already sub subscribed. And then you won't miss any more of our videos. And we've got loads more videos for you to check out. So do check those out of here. We've got one here that I think you'll really like.